Hello again, it's Priscilla Patzel in Spring Hill, Florida at Expression Start Studio Gallery in the backyard. And I have all kinds of ideas and want to do all kinds of stuff, and I don't promise to do anything I say. I'll just work as I go along. So first of all, I'm going to show you my edge catcher, which is looking pretty slick. And that is just a piece of anything that you put against the edge of a painting and catches the paint before it rolls over the side. So I'm thinking about doing an inversion pour. But I'm also thinking about including some rings with it. And I've been doing some ring pours recently where I discovered that I actually do have an aptitude to remember what goes in first and will come out last. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some colors in and I'm going to do the other thing that I learned, which is it's a really good idea to put white in between every ring. It doesn't necessarily show up. That's funny. I guess I just mixed some paint and I forgot to shake one. That's funny because I shook the rest. Anyway, never mind. It all mixes in. So I'm not too worried about that. I want to keep remembering to put my white in. And I've got some pretty metallic or shimmering. I use Golden's Iridescent Pearl Fine when I am going to try and create a metallic effect inside my paints. That is an Arteza blue from leftover from when I was doing little canvases. I have cleared my tips today. Thank you, me. <laughs> Took a while. I also made up some other paint. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do in a minute about any of this as far as keeping colors go, but I did take all the tops off so it takes me far less time <laughs> to, to, to show you what I want to show you. I'm not keeping my stuff very aligned. The thing about pouring smaller rings, which is what I have in mind, instead of one big ring, a lot of smaller rings, is that as you use your cup, you'll only get part of what you see. So it's important to try and think in that way, and that's a new way of thinking for me. <laughs> and I'm almost done here, and I might not need a second cup, is what I'm thinking. So maybe we'll just wait on that. I'm going to move that away and that away. This is my inversion. This is just a bottle top cut off. And before we do anything with that, I'm going to bring over my 16 by 20 inch canvas. And I just made a fresh batch of white paint. Is it white paint? I have glasses. I have glasses and I know how to use them. So I think I'll take that other piece of plastic off the corner. So I find that if I make a line pretty consistently all over it. I'm not going to get a huge amount of excess paint, which is what I prefer, but I want enough to cover everything. And this is my OXO omelet turning spatula, the miraculous paint spreading spatula that I recommend everybody grab one of. And grab the larger one, it's less, less expensive. The smaller one is still good to have when the larger one's in the bucket of water that I clean my tools in, but uh, I prefer the larger one because it has a more flexible blade. And that's available on the Amazon link underneath the video. That's my page. If you buy something there, it helps me out a little bit. Every, every little bit adds up eventually to something. And I appreciate it very much. They're about 10 bucks generally. I wouldn't pay more because if you wait, they'll be 10 bucks again. But that's what I paid. And the store I bought it from is closed here now in Spring Hill, but it doesn't matter. So inversion pours are different in that we add the paint, that goes in the bucket, which you will put in a bucket of sand or something, not down the pipes in your house, because you won't be happy if you do that. So inversion pours, I'm saying put a puddle of paint in to start with, because we're going to let the paint seep down out underneath, we hope. And I'm going to do the same thing hopefully, with the inversion pour that I've been doing with the ring pour, which is using a little white in between every layer, and see how that works. Actually, I lied. I want to try the yellow and the orange together. And then I'm going to go right back again. And I'm using kind of similar colors to the ones I put in the ring pour cup. Kind of. as in I'm layering them as opposed to splooging them in, which I 
might want to do another time, or I might just change my mind and do it soon, like in very soon. Those two colors are probably too dark and too close to each other, but I can't tell the difference between purple and Prussian blue, even though they're very close, i got to say. Now around here somewhere, that's a nice metallic blue that I love. There's some lighter blue. That's it. I'm going to put that right next to it. Now the only thing I'm thinking is that I want to mix some colors. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mix some colors by splooging, by pushing some of my paint right into the, the inversion pour cap. Let's do one more round so I'm sure I have enough paint. And if I don't want to do a ring, add a ring pour to it, I won't. But if I do, I will. Because I can. <laughs> and that's how I roll. Because I can. Oh gosh, you know what? I'm just, I'm obsessed with this new color yellow I've got. <laughs> and hopefully the ring, the uh, inversion pour will allow it to not get too muddy. But in order to do a good inversion pour, you need a nice heavy puddle of paint. Right around your bottleneck. Oh, and I have a flow trowel issue. I am going to be putting some screen into my bottle tips so that things like that are not an issue anymore. Now if I very, very slowly Okay, that's not as slow as I was thinking it was going to be. Let's just put that over there without trying to lose any other paint. I think I want some black. in my conversion area. I didn't use any gold and I kind of wish I had. I'm going to put that right down on my my paper that will, my, my plastic wrap that will keep it from being lost entirely because I can always peel it up as a skin. Now sometimes it's neat to try the torch because the torch will often release cells and patterns and then you can spread the cells. But if you do it too long or too hot, you will create a skin on the surface. But as long as the paint is nice and thick right now, it's not unlikely that we can get it to do some interesting things. It's a matter of slow tipping again. I do want some gold in there, but I'm thinking I might want to do it afterwards. I've got some really huge cells happening and if I'm willing to tip slowly and some laciness, which you do expect with the inversion pour and that's one of the reasons. I see that I did not add something that I want. And so I will, because I can. And I have lots of other tools like basting brushes and skewers. And spatulas. Where are my spatulas? Let's bring those over because I can swipe things with spatulas like like so. Not that I will do that necessarily. <laughs> I just had to do that for right now. I don't have enough purple where I want it. So I've already changed up the scenario. Now I'm going to change it up again by adding an edge catcher which is, like I said, mine are sheets of plastic that came out of packaging for canvases that, um, oh really? No, we have a dip. Cool. Check that out. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see what happens when I take whatever's on the edge catcher off and put it back again. Kind of cool. Accidents happen. <laughs> Especially when you're trying to work too fast. So I'm going to put this edge catcher right up against the edge. And I kind of like those flame patterns, but um, I'm okay not keeping them too. I don't know what's going to happen with this. Like I said, I have some nice cells. 
I'm going to let the paint pool all at the bottom and then I'm going to throw it right back in. Hoping that, uh, wishing that I had used a different color orange to tell you the truth. And maybe I can still do that. Yes, I can. Don't ever think you're stuck with just one thing, because you're not stuck. I like to see what I... In, I like to allow myself to be inspired to add a color and just go for it. I'm not under you guys, I can see that now. I like adding the squeeze bottles even though I have stuff that I made patterns on purpose with because that sort of changes up the texture of the, of the artwork. And I've got quite the, quite the textural artwork right now. I really want some gold in there and I think it might be time to find some gold before it's any more set up. And that I did not shake. And that you just saw was flow across. So shake your bottles and use a marble. I like that. I like that. I don't know what's going to happen with this yet. But I am going to go back where I was. I could spread anything I want with a spatula and see what happens that way. I'm going to tip my paint so it runs toward the mass that I just added so that when it collapses into a puddle I should, in, all, in my theory, be able to salvage some of that gold and have it come back onto the canvas. As long as I'm holding tight under the edge and squeezing it back on All right, I don't mind that. That's kind of okay. I kind of want to do some more over here. I have a lot of wet paint that I may not want all on, all the way down the edge of my canvas on the edge catcher. I could use a fresh edge catcher. It's not a bad idea, really. You will probably experience some paint loss at some point if you do this. Right down your arm, in fact, <laughs> for sure. My edge catcher is sticking to me. But this is kind of cool. I'm not minding it anymore. I am going to just scrape some of that edge catcher paint right off and let it flow onto the canvas. And have a look at what I've got and think about it for a minute. My edge catcher down somewhere else so I have a chance to think about it. All right, let's see. What do I want to do? I want to get out a Princeton Catalyst Art Tool and use it. And I like that gold up there, but I want more of it. That way. <laughs> so honestly, I'm going to go the wrong way first so I can mix that in. also can just integrate whatever I want into my design by gently pulling with my spatula. I've got this navy blue and I like this navy blue and I'm thinking, hoping you can see what I'm doing. That'll be good. I'm thinking I'm not going to use that ring pour cup, but I could still do it and see what happens by ladling it into the middle. Oh, that wasn't good. I don't think that those should be there. <laughs> I'll scavenge one of my uh, skewers and let the rest go for now. 
So the nice thing about the uh, Prussian blue with the decor pouring medium in, as the vast majority of its pouring medium mixture, is the fact that it will sell so nicely. And the other thing about me having all this heavy paint on here is that I use Golden's GAC 800, which, is, which promises to help alleviate or disallow cracking when paint is heavy and it dries. And for me, it works pretty darn well. I gotta say that I've never been disappointed with it. And I've used gallons, literally. So that's cool so far. I like what I have, but I want some more of that light blue right there. Especially since I see the brown. And I'm going to pull it over to the edge of my tile and use my finger to clean my spatula off and then put it back on the canvas. And I've got the paint that's running out of the top of the bottle top that I use for the inversion pour directly to over here. <laughs> and um, it's perfectly timed for me to use it to add to the paint that I've got here, because it's blue, mostly, and cover my edges, which is fine by me. Convenient as heck. All right, so that's okay, and the only thing that's bothering me so far is this down here. I didn't really want to lose all of my white space, and I don't know if you can see all of that, which is not my intention to exclude you, I promise. I don't mind the red and the orange, but I want it to be a little bit lighter than it is in those areas. And I like putting the magenta near. I'm going to wipe off my spatula. That's not bothering me much, but I want something else in there. And I'm going to take, I would have taken my round end spatula, but it seems to be a little AWOL. So that's cool. And all that makes me want to do is come over here and scrape out my bottle top and see what I get before it gets any drier, because it looks like it is setting up a little say the least. So I'm going to add a little paint in there. Oh wow, that went by really fast. So I've got like a minute to tell you that if you want to shop my Amazon link, it helps me out. And there's Teespring clothing that have my designs and slogans on them under the video. And there's a rest pouring recipe inside the description under the video. And there's Pinterest and Instagram links at the very bottom. And also two albums on Facebook of YouTube wet and dry artworks that show the prices. My, my stuff is for sale. I have over 330 videos. If you want to give me a hand, there's any number of ways to do it. There's still a contest running at this moment to win a painting. If you take the studio tour that I posted in November, if you can find it, it shows the artworks available. And that's pretty cool, and that's almost everything I can think of to tell you, other than I do sell my artwork and get in touch and to give lessons. If you want to have a lesson, just uh, do what everybody else is doing so far and contact, contact me on uh, YouTube, and I'll share an email address with you, and we can have a conversation about that. So the only thing left for me to do at this point is say goodbye to you and probably torch this and see what happens when I do that, because I'm not going to do much else. And we torch to get rid of the bubbles in the paint. And there should be quite a few of them today. Wow, that's loud. There should be quite a few of them. That's still really loud. Quite a, quite a few of them today after making paint and shaking paint. This is pretty cool. It's very different. There might be the odd color I want to add. And I think you're going to be gone, so I won't be able to tell you that. But there's some great cells. I'm liking the way it flows. I think it's really pretty, actually gold over the edge. I don't think there's much of a fix necessary. I'm getting lots of nice cells and I'll say thank you to all my contributors if any of you are still here. And I appreciate the comments.
keep them coming. <laughs>